One of the most eligible bachelors in France is Jocelyn, the CEO of an important shoe company. What people don't know however is that he is constantly lying about everything in order to get women's attention, changing the stories as he goes and making them into incomprehensible anecdotes that somehow still work because of his charms and money. Not only that, but he is also extremely misogynist, thinking women are only good for one night, staring at their body parts instead of looking at their faces when they talk, and letting his hands be inappropriate with waitresses. The only person that knows his real self is his best friend and Dr. Max, who wishes Jocelyn would drop all the lying but knows his pleas won't be heard. One day, Jocelyn gets a call bringing sad news, his mother, who he hadn't seen or spoken to in years, passed away. The day of the funeral, Jocelyn has the nerve to arrive late and even follows the wrong group before he realizes his mistake and finds the right grave. His brother Lucien is already there, but their father hasn't come since he divorced their mother years ago too. After Jocelyn complains about the priest's speech for being too long, not caring about being disrespectful, Lucien gives him the keys to their mother's apartment, claiming she would have wanted him to visit before it gets sold. The next day, Jocelyn goes to his mother's place and gets a bit nostalgic as he looks at her old things and listens to her old cassettes while sitting in her wheelchair. In fact hearing his mother's favorite song inspires him to shake around to the rhythm until he's suddenly interrupted by Julie, the new neighbor. She thinks Jocelyn lives here and that he's wheelchair bound, offering help if he ever needs it because she works as a caretaker. Seeing how beautiful she is, Jocelyn decides to play along with the lie and even drops things to the floor on purpose so she'll pick them up for him and give him a chance to get a better look at her body. After they chit chat for a while, Julie leaves and Jocelyn goes to see Max for his regular checkup since he needs to keep an eye on his health because he's training to run a marathon. Max thinks pretending to be paraplegic just to get a woman is an insane idea, but Jocelyn thinks he's being smart and will go ahead with it. The following day, after a big meeting at work, Jocelyn changes into what he considers disabled clothes to look more pitiful, gets his mother's chair, and visits Julie to invite her to have coffee at his mother's place. They chat for a while and while Jocelyn makes many mistakes in his story, like saying he doesn't work just because he's disabled, he still manages to charm Julie and she falls for the lie. When she's about to leave, Jocelyn confesses he's the CEO of a company and pretends he lied because he didn't want to be seen just as a rich businessman, this honesty impresses Julie and prompts her to invite him to lunch with her family on the weekend. When the day comes, Jocelyn parks far away from the house in order to put together the wheelchair under the curious eyes of a passing man, then he rides the chair all the way up the road to Julie's house. He gets to meet all the members of her family including her older sister Florence, who to Jocelyn's surprise, is wheelchair bound for real. It turns out Julie isn't actually interested in Jocelyn, she's been checking him out as a potential date for her sister. After lunch, Jocelyn and Florence are left alone so they can get to know each other better, and at first Jocelyn stays grumpy because he isn't interested, but he slowly warms up to Florence as she talks more and shows what an interesting person she is. She works as a violinist, but she also plays tennis in the disabled league, and she has a great sense of humor. While their chat turns out to be fun, Jocelyn still would rather have Julie, and he tells Max as much when they meet again. Max once again reminds Jocelyn this is insane, but Jocelyn thinks he's good enough to fake disability in front of another disabled person and not get caught. Meanwhile Julie goes to the apartment again and finds Lucien there, who is very confused by Julie's description of Jocelyn but plays along because he doesn't want trouble with an innocent girl. The next time Jocelyn visits his mother's grave, Lucien takes the chance to approach him and call him out for his lie, pointing out Jocelyn doesn't like his real self and lies all the time to hide it. The next Monday, Jocelyn goes to work after going out for a run and tells his secretary Marie she doesn't need to come to the office every time because he's installed an intercom. Afterward, he's surprised to hear Florence has come to see him, and since he doesn't have his mother's wheelchair, he improvises by sitting on the desk. Florence assumes he's doing that instead of using the chair because he doesn't want his clients to pity him, which she completely understands, and explains she's come to apologize for her sister, because she hadn't known she had been trying to play matchmaker. Their conversation is interrupted by Marie, who is trying to follow orders and not enter the office, creating a whole ridiculous situation. First she makes funny gestures through the glass wall, then she tries to get Jocelyn to leave the office to speak of a private matter. Jocelyn reminds her to use the intercom, and this results in Marie announcing through the speaker that Max has confirmed Jocelyn's colonoscopy appointment. Thankfully Florence takes it with good humor and after Jocelyn hangs up, she invites him to come to watch her next tennis match for the tournament that his company refused to sponsor. Before leaving, she also points out that his ad campaign using a black man running is too cliché. Once she's gone, Jocelyn shocks everyone in the office by demanding an employee to check out the disabled tournament for possible sponsorships since he never cared about that kind of thing before. The day of the match comes and Jocelyn decides to attend, which results in having a new whole perspective of Florence, she's impressive on the field, and Jocelyn comes to understand disabled people can play sports as everyone else, he's also surprised to see not only disabled people come to watch these matches. At the end of the match, he tries to leave without being discovered, but Florence turns around the corner and Jocelyn has no choice but to sit in the nearest wheelchair he can find. This turns out to be Florence's everyday chair, which she left in the hallway when she moved onto her sports chair. 
Jocelyn first says his own chair was stolen, then pretends his secretary left with the car and he forgot his chair inside, but promises to send the chair back to Florence later. Being okay with staying on her sports chair, Florence invites Jocelyn to have drinks with her and the other disabled athletes. At the bar, Jocelyn keeps making lots of inappropriate questions, and has the nerve to look annoyed when he's asked questions in return. When he returns home, he tries to listen to the classical music Florence likes to play, but he still considers it boring. The next day, Marie takes the chair back to Florence together with a sweet message from Jocelyn, who asked Marie to lie as well and to try to find out some extra details about Florence. The plan works and Marie's is invited inside to share a drink, giving her the opportunity to get to know Florence better and being impressed by her optimistic sophical view of life. When she returns to the office, Marie brings Jocelyn the schedule of Florence's concerts with her band and informs him she's changed the date of his meeting in Praga to match Florence's performance. Marie doesn't like the fact Jocelyn is lying, so she urges him to go to Praga and tell Florence the truth. In Praga, after his meeting is over, Jocelyn gets ready for the concert and gets in some trouble when he asks the hotel receptionist to find him a wheelchair because he doesn't speak the language and his gesturing is mistaken for something body. In the end, he gets access to a marked cart, which he drives all the way into the concert hall. Watching Florence play is a beautiful experience, although Jocelyn can't stop himself from looking at her body anyway. After the concert, Jocelyn approaches Florence to congratulate her while pretending he was in Praga for business and finding her concert had been a coincidence. Seeing this as an opportunity, Florence invites Jocelyn to have dinner with her instead of going out with her fellow band members. The dinner is lovely and the two of them have lots of fun together, Jocelyn's glee even prompts him to sing along to the restaurant's band when they play his mother's favorite song. After dinner, Florence invites Jocelyn to come to her hotel room with her, and while at first Jocelyn accepts, on their way there he starts feeling guilty and turns the invitation down, claiming it's not right. Before leaving though, he kisses Florence on the cheek. When she returns to Paris, Florence shares with Julie what happened, making Julie think that Jocelyn can't use his male equipment because of his disability. But even if that's true, Florence doesn't care, because Jocelyn makes her laugh and makes her feel like a full woman again. Jocelyn continues to train for the marathon and attends an office party, where he confesses to a nervous Marie that he hasn't told Florence the truth yet. The next time he listens to classical music, Jocelyn likes it much more, and he gathers the courage to invite Jocelyn to have dinner at his house. He tells Max about this plan over dinner, and after ignoring his friend's protests, Jocelyn asks him how paraplegic people do it. Already expecting this question, Max read about it and shares his findings with Jocelyn, but he still believes it won't work out. In the evening, Florence comes to Jocelyn's home and fortunately doesn't comment on the fact that the house isn't designed to use a wheelchair inside. Jocelyn tries to confess the truth a couple of times, but he always stops himself at the last second and keeps his mouth shut. They have dinner on top of the swimming pool, thanks to the fancy electric lid that can move up and down with a mere button, and Florence convinces Jocelyn to share how he became disabled. Inspired by Christopher Reeve, Jocelyn says he fell off a hose, and in return Florence confesses she was in a car accident she caused herself. Afterward, she tells him about an old boyfriend that betrayed her and the fact she can't stand lies, so once again Jocelyn stops himself from telling her the truth and instead, he lowers the pool lid, allowing the two of them can get busy underwater while floating, that way Jocelyn can keep the lie up and still have a good time. The next time Jocelyn sees Max, he confesses that at this rate he may fall in love with Florence, but Max tells him he already is. To make matters worse, Florence insists she wants to meet Jocelyn's friends, thus he brings Max and Marie to dinner with them because they're the only people who are more than mere acquaintances to him. Marie is a lightweight and quickly gets drunk, making her tell a fake story about a disabled uncle that makes no sense at all. Max on the other hand wants to tell Florence the truth, but when he's about to, Jocelyn spills the soy sauce on his pants on purpose to make Max take him to the bathroom. While they argue about being the right time to confess or not, a friend of Florence's enters the bathroom, so Jocelyn has to pretend that Max is helping him do number two. Meanwhile Lucienne is having a date with Julie. The following day, Julie finds Jocelyn and slaps him because she knows the truth now thanks to Lucienne, who told her about it for the sake of Jocelyn's own good. Furious, Julie gives Jocelyn 48 hours to talk to Florence or she'll put him through hell. Not knowing what to do, Jocelyn goes to see his dad at the nursing home, where the old man ogles at and flirts with the elderly women that live there too. When Jocelyn asks him for advice, his dad comes up with a quick plan, he should take Florence to the sanctuary of Our Lady of Lourdes and pretend a miracle happens that makes him walk again. Jocelyn likes the idea and even convinces Max to drive him there, although he still doesn't approve, Marie'll come as well. When Florence gets a call with the invitation, she immediately accepts, and Julie gets worried because she doesn't think his sister should be seeing this guy anymore. To calm her nerves, Florence confesses Jocelyn probably wants to go to Lourdes to fake a miracle and that she's always known he isn't actually disabled, it's not something you can fake in front of someone that has lived like this for so many years. She never said anything because she believes in enjoying happiness where she can find it and who knows if she could ever find love anywhere else, this could be the best she could ever get in her condition. When they finally travel to Lourdes, 
They ask the locals about the process behind getting miracles, and a priest comes to take Jocelyn to the church to have a private talk. This priest already knows Jocelyn isn't paraplegic because his shoes look worn out, and he asks Jocelyn not to fake the miracle because it would give thousands of believers false hope. Besides if a miracle happened, the news would be all over it, so people that knew Jocelyn before would recognize him in the pictures and call out the lie. In the end, Jocelyn leaves the church still in the wheelchair, and Florence feels incredibly disappointed by his cowardice. She's so lost in her thoughts that while crossing a street she doesn't see a truck coming and almost gets hit, but Jocelyn saves her before it can happen by finally walking in front of her. Jocelyn feels incredibly awkward and Florence tries to help by calling it a miracle, but she still dumps him and returns to the city with Max and Marie in the car while Jocelyn is left behind hitchhiking. When Jocelyn returns home, he's a man changed by the experience and tries to fix some of his habits. He leaves flowers with an apology on his mother's grave and changes the ad campaign to include a man in a wheelchair. He can't stop thinking about Florence though, so one day while he's driving through the city, he suddenly speeds up until he reaches the outskirts and stops his car in front of the band's bus. Then, he gets in the bus to apologize to Florence, saying sorry twice before leaving without waiting for an answer. Sometime later, Jocelyn invites Marie into his office to check on her and she finally has a breakdown, confessing she doesn't feel appreciated and respected even after 12 years working here, and nobody will even remember her birthday, which is today. As a response, Jocelyn surprises her with a birthday gift as a sign he'll do better from now on. The day of the marathon, Jocelyn discovers he hasn't trained as well as he thought and falls to his knees in the middle of it. To his surprise, Florence appears in the middle of the track, pretending to be there by coincidence like he did in Praga, and offers her help. Now Jocelyn gets to sit on Florence's lap while she guides her chair to the finish line as everyone cheers for them, and as soon as they make it, the two of them celebrate with a kiss. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.